want to get this meeting started. I want to thank everybody for coming here. By the way, this is not a microphone to be loud. This is just so we can be on Brachin Community Access. So welcome. I'm the Ward 5 City Councilor. You're in Ward 5. And this is a joint meeting with our state rep, Jerry Cassidy. So I'm going to have him come up here first because he has higher stature. stature and um, he's been working harder on Beacon Hill to bring money into Broughton. This, it, it, Ann, thank you. This is, uh, I, I normally have my office hours here monthly, and uh, this was a great idea for Ann to you know, combine this. Normally I have like one or, one or two people. Uh, usually Ann is the other, the other person, the first person. But uh, no, we, uh, we just uh, finished up the budget uh, last uh, month. Um, uh, Representative Cronin and Dubois and I uh, working very hard. The Senate's in, uh, in uh, uh, session this week working on the, uh, the budget. It's uh, $41 billion, and uh, we just increased uh, local aid, uh, uh, close to $2 million for uh, the city for uh, uh, schools and you know, all kinds of other issues. The Senate, I think, is even a little higher up. So uh, when the numbers actually finally come down uh, to Brockton, we'll probably be $3 million extra. Uh, so hopefully that's going to go back to the schools, roads, and all that stuff. So, um, and we had some earmarks also in the, uh, the, the city. Uh, we got uh, playgrounds. Um, the uh, I got the Nelson playground. We got seventy-five thousand for that. The Ashery playground. We got one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars to repair that. I think we did the the Hancock uh, just recently. Uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So uh, Rep. Dewire has the Nelson, uh, the uh, uh, which uh, north side. Uh, uh, McKinley. Yes, McKinley. Yep, had had that just done. We had another one hundred fifty thousand. So. You know, we're working very hard up on uh, Beacon Hill, uh, and uh, Ian and I were talking about the foreclosure uh, uh, issue uh, uh, that was back in uh, 2006. So uh, we've seen some people on the foreclosure issue. You can drive around the city of Brockton, and you know that they're, uh, they just toss the keys, toss the keys and walk away from them. We don't want to have that same thing happen back in the, uh, 2006. So Ian and I were talking about, you know, we want to get out in front of it, have like the AG's office come in, and uh, that's why I invited uh, Brian Moriarty and uh, um, Joe from uh, uh, Neighbor NeighborWorks. If they could just say a couple of things about the foreclosure issues, uh, that'd be great if you don't mind Absolutely. a couple of seconds. Thanks, Representative Cassidy. Um, we, uh, Excuse me. We've been working on foreclosures since uh, 2008. Uh, we are a HUD counseling agency uh, we're uh, uh, certified in foreclosure counseling uh, we get our money through neighbor works as well as um, the uh, state through the uh, division of banks and we were getting some money from uh, the attorney general's office so we act as an advocate for for the homeowner in applying for a modification uh, we do a, a budget and we submit all the uh, all the documents to the lender, and then we follow up. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, with the lender to get a modification. Um, I've been working with John Buckley, the Register of Deeds. Um, he sends me notices uh, for everybody that receives a notice to foreclose, and um, I send out a letter to those people. Um, saying um, uh, how can you how can we help you so that everybody gets a uh, notice to foreclose they get our notice to where they can get help um, since 2008 we've served uh, over a thousand people in Brockton with uh, modifications so we're helping to keep e these people in the house uh, because you know uh, uh, vacant buildings uh, are public public nuisance, and uh, we don't. You know, we live in the city, and I live in, and uh, I don't want to see that happen. So, um, so any questions? So we, we just want to get ahead of it, just in case. Uh, like mm -hmm. Ian and I were talking, if it does happen again. We would like to talk to the attorney general's office and actually have somebody come down from the attorney general's office. And you know, we've seen it before down the road. You know, I've been here, you know, my whole life, and uh, 
we just don't want it to happen again and get out right in front of it again, all right? Yeah, yes, that's what we're working on. And um, Brian here can tell us about how his boss just received some money, a good amount. Robert Corley told us that he received about $6 million from Wells Fargo yep, to yep. keep your jobs going mm -hmm. and to work on this. So we're trying to work with an individual to get back in some way, in Joel Bushman, right. to um, oh. attack these uh, 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 distressed properties. Yes, did you have a question? Okay, no, that, that this is, so what we want is communication from the get-go, and this is one of the reasons why my colleague is here tonight. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about code enforcement, because they seem to go hand in hand, and the, the, the issues with that, and I also, I have a guest here tonight too, that Ron Freddy, I invite all the time because he can help so many people about a variety of different issues. So we're going to have people, you know, right. moving along here. I just didn't know if Billy had a question. Jerry? Uh, uh, I just want to mention in regard, and I'm glad to hear about the code enforcement. I, we, in the last um, foreclosure problem, I was directly across from me at the left vacants and just a horrible mess, rats running out in the front and everything. And I called up the uh, city hall several times, nothing was done. Um, the bank had put a notice on it. So what they had done, I took many pictures, and I went to a ward five meeting, actually, and there just happened to be the mayor and Dennis and Napoli at the time, and I showed them the pictures. Yeah. And, um, you know, what do I need to do to get to do something about this? He said, well, you know, call me, blah, blah, blah. So what I did was I called the bank, and I told yeah. them what yeah. happened. But I shouldn't have had it done. No, and I'm sure not. now if I was doing it, no. many other no. people would. No. So we've got to get City Hall, yeah. whoever yeah. is supposed to be following that step. Yeah. Because we all know that it's been a problem. Yep. So I'm glad to you're you're definitely right. So we're in and I are out in front of it. Any questions for me? And don't forget to give me your, your phone right. number. She's, 617. She's the boss. Oh, <laughs> uh, Joe, actually, Joe. Joe would like to just say something about the foreclosure. Please. Please. Yeah. Yes. Okay. About the code enforcement. Uh, a while ago, uh, with some money from the Attorney General's office, the city has been going around and taking, well, not they're not taking the property, but what they're doing is they're, I'm trying to think of what the term is, receivership. They're putting them in receivership, which allows them to fix up the property, clean up the property, and then it becomes the, the current owners, which is more than likely a lender, okay, who gave the person the mortgage in the first place, and then when the house is sold, the city gets reimbursed. Mm -hmm. The redevelopment authority has been very active in that, and it's been it's been a good program. Now, mm -hmm. my understanding is is that the money has been used up. Well, yes, that's, yeah. and that's why I've been talking to your boss to hopefully get some of the money. Okay. You know, and, uh, well, the I do want to make one clarification yeah. to the six million dollars yes, that you're talking well, about. It's for down payment assistance for new I, I for people who are buying, you know, and it's not it it's not just Brockton. It's actually Quincy we've done. It, yeah. Ryan mentioned we you know worked with a thousand people in Brockton. We probably work with five thousand people because we're not just a Brockton agency. Mm -hmm. We're basically all of the South Shore. Mm -hmm. So we actually have offices in Quincy, Brockton, and New Bedford now. Mm -hmm. So. And the last thing I just want to say was we passed out something else that was, this is a list of, of the services that we offer, okay? Because although we have been involved in foreclosure for, since Brian came and I came, Brian was the first employee here ten, a little over 10 years ago, and I was a second or third about four months after him. And uh, we were working exclusively in foreclosure, but we also do home buyer education, we also do a program called Financial Power, which is helping people meet their financial goals. And that sort of stems from the fact that we, we get involved with people who, uh, they come to the workshop to find out about buying a home and realize that they're not ready. So we do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with them to make them ready, help them with their credit, you know, maybe save some money, things like that. We also have two of probably, I think in, in the southeastern part of the state, we have two of maybe four reverse mortgage counselors, and the other two are on the Cape. Mm -hmm. So if you, 
if you know anything about that, it's if you were interested in a reverse mortgage, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about it, but basically you have to have counseling before you can actually uh, get involved with a, a reverse mortgage. So we have two people who were certified to do that because you got to go through a rigorous testing and everything else. And I'm trying to think of what else we have on here. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, we, it, this isn't relevant now, but we, we did uh, seven, almost 750 tax returns uh, this year through the VITA program. We do taxes in the other room over here on Monday nights, and we are at Massasoit on Saturdays, and uh, we also started doing the same thing at Randolph. So that's uh, that's. Uh, our staff and, and a boatload of volunteers do that. So I do want to say just one more thing. You know, uh, this uh, being the city of champions, Brian is retiring about a month from now. So uh, Brian, you've been a great champion here for the city of Brockton. I just thank you for Appreciate everything. He has been. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well. You're welcome. I just want to make it clear that these gentlemen are here tonight. It's okay to come over and talk to them. They're also in downtown Brockton, okay, in Quincy's, um, I'm sorry, on Legion Parkway. And Representative Cassidy will be speaking again briefly, but I also, I have a couple other people, you know, that have been I'm going through some serious challenges with these foreclosures, and I understand these situations are frustrating, and there's various services in the city, and I could just cry sometimes when I hear people say that they spent a great deal, of, you know, a sum on an attorney, and in so many instances, someone could have been available to them. Now, um, this gentleman here, Ron, <laughs> that um, I say nice things about him, but actually he does nice things, and he's located at 215 uh, Main Street, and he does help people with a lot. I have one of the handouts here. He has a whole lot more, and I cannot emphasize how many people that myself and others have sent him to, and they've come back, and things have generally been resolved. And that's, that's huge, because people were, how would I say it, in very depressed situations. So I'm going to pass it over to Ron here. Thank you. Everybody's all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Uh, I recognize some faces from prior Ward 5 meetings that I've been to. I have nothing left to say and said it all. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'd like to go and give you the who, what, when, where, how, and why of our program. And uh, basically we'll start out with who we are. We are the Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution. We are a uh, 501c3 nonprofit charity organization. And um, my name is Ron Freddy. I am a um, uh, retired postal worker. I've been doing this work in mediation for over 11 years now. Um, I have a master's degree from the University of Massachusetts in Boston in dispute resolution and a bachelor's degree in legal studies. So that's the who. I'm also joined tonight by one of our volunteer mediators, Michelle Burden. Yeah. She's also a who, part of our program. Uh, so welcome, Michelle. Thank you for coming. Um, so what do we do? Uh, we provide face-to-face -face mediation services. What that means is we provide a forum whereby we have people who are having difficulty with disputes, an opportunity to come and meet face-to-face -face with each other with a neutral third-party mediator in a, who has been trained in mediation, uh, 32 hours of training at a minimum, who have been trained in how to work with people to resolve disputes. Our dis range of disputes run everywhere from neighborhood disputes to consumer di and business disputes, business to business disputes. Uh, we have uh, car towing issues. We have uh, bank issues. We have uh, credit card <coughs> issues. We have lots and lots of different issues that people have that they can't get resolved. And what we do is we offer them an opportunity to come to us and we work with them. And uh, in those instances where uh, the task may be greater than what we can provide. We have referral services. We refer people to different agencies and to different attorneys and uh, free programs and things like that. So uh, that's kind of the what we do. Um, when we do it, uh, we have normal office hours, generally Monday through Thursday uh, from 8 to 4 at the courthouse, um, Friday by appointment, and we also do after hours mediations for people who both work during the week and need an opportunity to mediate 
after hours, we provide after hours mediation. We utilize the library here, Pembroke Library, Hanover Library, Hingham Library, et cetera, wherever the uh, dispute is happening. We service 28 communities uh, in and around the Brockton area, just not uh, Brockton. So when we do that is uh, at the convenience of the parties. That's our mandate is that we do mediation at the convenience of the party. So if you can't mediate during the week because you work, we'll make arrangements to mediate on Saturdays. If you can't meet during the regular workday hours, we will meet with you after hours to mediate. We do, uh, like I said, a whole range of mediations. We do uh, also divorce and post-divorce mediations and whatnot, and we do quite a few of those here in the library because people work during the week. Um, so that's the who, what, when, uh, where we do it. Well, our, we do mediations in the courthouse. We have our regular office hours there. We have conference rooms over in the courthouse that we can do work there. And as I mentioned, we can utilize off-site locations for the convenience of the parties. Um, how we do it, we do the mediation with volunteers. I have a whole host of volunteers uh, that have been trained in mediation, and what we do is we schedule cases, and what we do is we try to use a co-mediation model, which means uh, a male and a female will be the mediators, uh, particularly in divorce cases where it's important that one party doesn't feel like they're being outnumbered uh, by uh, a male or a female two to one ratio. Um, so I have a number of volunteer mediators that are very dedicated and they uh, offer freely their time. They are volunteers and um, uh, they're very, very effective mediators. Um, the, the why is, um, why am I here tonight? I'm here because Anne is a tremendous ambassador. Uh, she believes truly in uh, dispute resolution. She uh, likes to describe it as non-conflict resolution, which is exactly what it is. And uh, the other why is that I'm here because Ann is really uh, concerned that her constituents get the most information possible they can possibly get about the free services that are available to people in downtown Brockton that uh, they may not be aware of. So that's what I'm doing here tonight. I have a whole host of literature. We're funded by the um, Attorney General's office, and whenever I go to speak, I bring literature put out by the Attorney General's office, everything from how to hire a contract to repair your credit, something to do with student loans, landlord tenant uh, uh, brochures. I also have some speaker cards over there. If you're a member of any group and you would like me to come in and speak to your group, I'm available to do that. I also have some brochures about the types of services that we offer more in depth than what I'm speaking to tonight, and my business cards are over there as well. We also have a website, I will mention it for the people who may be watching, it is www.gbcdr.org, and the GBCDR stands for Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution, .org. It's on all the literature over here on uh, the table, so if you want to take some of that with you when you go. Uh, and again, our phone numbers are on the literature. Uh, for those watching, it's 508-897-2868. And uh, if you have a dispute or you know anybody that has a dispute, uh, are we conflict free in this area? <laughs> no. That's there's lots, <laughs> there's lots, of, lots of opportunities for conflict resolution, so please don't hesitate. Any questions for me? So it is free? It is free. Yes. It is free. We're funded by the Attorney General's Office and also through the legislature uh, by the Massachusetts Office of Public Collaboration. And your representatives are very supportive of us. Any other questions? And Ron's available, you know, if you guys want to go somewhere and talk to him, you know, got a little bit more involved, we can, we can put you in the children's room. No. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Did you have a question? Oh, someone? Um, yes. Not really a question, but I want to make you aware that although all your help is still was that we are in the book and not being practice, mm -hmm. although all the conflict and the resolution you come and the funds you guys got, we still have a courthouse that is lacking on acting in fraud, mm -hmm. mortgage fraud, mm -hmm. our registrar's office fraud. Mm -hmm. I've been through calling many people and hear from everybody and see you acting at your job. And I don't think it's really bringing to the table what the families actually need that are in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. The problem is 
higher than what you are reaching for. Mm -hmm. So we need a judge in legislating local people mm -hmm. who make sure to the housing judges, mm -hmm. if they don't have the intelligence or the competence to work, at least have the government counsel who supposedly make laws to be transparent, to be honest with mm -hmm. the people. I spent a lot of money in lawyers, 2016, 2017, to end up at a courthouse mm -hmm. where a judge make little requirement for this so-called foreclosure farms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, as I indicated earlier, uh, my office is in the courthouse, uh, 215 Main Street, but we are not part of the court. We are a nonprofit agency. We provide free services to the court in trying to resolve the disputes that come to basically take it out of the courthouse and see what we can resolve. There are lots of issues that cannot be resolved by us that are beyond us that do get referred to the courts, that do get referred to the judges. In Massachusetts, mediation is a voluntary process. That means both parties need to agree to participate. If one party refuses to participate, there's nothing in the law that says I can compel the other party to participate. So in those cases, yes, those cases go forward and they may go in front of a judge. And there are lots of people that uh, win cases and lose cases in front of judges. And uh, lots of people aren't happy with the results of court cases. And we certainly understand that. That's why we try to resolve disputes before they get to a judge. Any other questions? Thank you for but your I point. I just want to make a quick comment on that situation. The fact is not, the point is not bringing honest, transparent law to the table. And a judge who really would look at fraud, it starts at the fourth land, the register. We need to make a change there. Mm -hmm. Once you get in pay from the Attorney General's office, we know that she should do a finer job before you are here. Because the point is we have incompetence at the housing court with the judges. They avoid to look at the truth and they see at the light, like things. And we need them to really be clear and transparent with us. And it's lacking honesty on their part. Whether it's in the government's office, where there is local lawyers who take cases and just divert the people from the truth. Yeah. And we can help. So it sounds like you're frustrated with the existing it's system. Frustrates yeah. a lot of people. They just maybe don't know how to speak. They haven't been able to see uh -huh. fraud. And we know division of banks. Mm -hmm. Attorney General's office can do something, and even the governor's office can do something. We have foolish law firms, foreclosure law firms, who are doing that on purpose. And you guys just sitting around and allowing it, and avoiding to see the truth. Thank you. Any other questions? Right, thank you very much. This, this is how you do a ward meeting. You invite all these other people to speak so you don't have to. No, just kidding. But um, next is uh, Jimmy Pereira. Jimmy Pereira is um, active in the community, but his real job is um, Old Colony Planning Council is going to talk about a couple of things. And uh, what I want to emphasize here to everyone, you know, watching or what have you, is that all, everything that's been spoken about already, whether it's State Rep Cassidy or uh, Neighbor Works or um, Greater Broughton Dispute Resolution, these are all services, these are all opportunities for people to get the you know services, answer questions that they need, or get, go in the right direction. And we can provide you with phone numbers. They, ex you know, they exist. We can connect you up with um, websites, et cetera. Because the idea is there are plenty of opportunities in this city to resolve situations you wish you weren't in or try to not be in them in the first place. So that's, that's what I want to emphasize. My some of my colleagues are here. I'm going to have them come up, so <laughs> they're not going to get out of this too easily. So anyway, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, I've just been down. I didn't know. That's OK. This doesn't work? Oh, this is for the people at home. Right. Um, good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Jimmy Pereira. 
I'm here uh, with Oak County Planning Council. I'm the Community Transportation pl uh, Planner at uh, 70 School Street. So I just want to uh, give everyone a heads up that we're having a uh, bicycle pedestrian, a regional bicycle pedestrian advisory meeting. Uh, there's a daytime meeting, uh, May 30th, 12 p.m. at Oak County Planning Council, uh, which is, again, 70 School Street. There is an evening meeting, uh, June 5th, uh, at 6 p.m. here at the uh, main branch uh, as well. So please uh, uh, share. Uh, you can visit the website. I'll write it up on the uh, board here so everyone sees it and uh, and the viewers at home as well too where you'll be able to find information uh, another uh, highlight we've also released the uh, regional bicycle pedestrian uh, plan as well so you'll be able to see uh, what uh, innovative ideas we have for uh, not just Brockton but the uh, greater Brockton area as well so that's all I have and I'll pass it on to the next person thank you, thank you. Thank you. okay the next person happens to be the registrar of deeds John Buckley is just dropping by here to talk um, about a couple of things. Yes. This is kind of fun. Yeah, of course, all of us, when Ian calls, you show up, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, Council Beauregard and I have been having a number of conversations over the last few months about um, an issue that many people are aware of. And that is something that we see at the registry, unfortunately, more than we'd like, which is the foreclosure filings. Um, clearly, it's better than it was during 2008. Uh, some of the people in the room might have gone to St. Patrick's Church when BIC had their first foreclosure meeting back in 2008. Uh, Congressman Frank and Lynch were both there. Uh, there were foreclosure conferences held at Massasoit Conference Center, as well as the Arnone School, when literally hundreds of people were lined up down the street. And thankfully, um, that time period has gone by. Um, clearly, housing is cyclical. We hope we never see that again. Um, but I know uh, there's going to be a representative from NeighborWorks here. And one of the things that they really promote very well is home buyer training and responsible home buyers that you actually understand what you're buying, what kind of loan you're getting, and what you need to do to be a homeowner. It's not easy to upkeep and all that. And they run a great um, training class, particularly for first time home buyers. As I said, the numbers are way down. However, it's still uh, an issue to be aware of. So thankfully, on the point when someone's in trouble, there's a place to go. NeighborWorks is a very experienced, federally authorized housing counselor. However, on the flip side of that, as far as the city and the neighborhood is concerned, once a home has been taken back, particularly by national lenders, it tends to sit around for a long time. And I know in every ward, uh, there are uh, houses that have been laying dormant for quite some time. Nobody can figure out exactly what it is. Many times it's an estate issue, but sometimes it's just the lender doesn't work very quickly. Uh, for years, there was a program in Brockton called the Distressed Property uh, Relief Program, funded uh, by then Attorney General Coakley and then refunded by Attorney General Healy. However, that funding has run out and that program is over. Um, certainly a, a concern and it should be a concern to everybody. Council Beauregard has been leading the charge on trying to find a way to, to refund that. And that's one of the reasons I was asked to come by in case people had any questions about those kinds of things. Um, and I will just leave this with one last thought. Um, Plymouth County is made up of 27 communities. Brockton is the largest, it's the only city. But many of the communities across Plymouth County have adopted the Community Preservation Act, and it frustrated me for, to no end for many years when uh, places like Dover and Duxbury, uh, who adopted it um, because their residents felt they could afford it, uh, were passing up on all that money because the highest number of surcharges, and what it is is a surcharge on all sales of real estate, the highest number of surcharges from the community preservation surcharge is for Brockton. So literally millions of dollars have been turned back over the years 
And I know I've had some conversations with Councilor Cruz, who's going to bring it forward, at least for discussion purposes. And I just think that's a good thing. Um, but with that, I'll be happy to stay around and or answer any questions now if you have them, and happy to respond to the call. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I have one regarding um, whether or not you know or who some of the people are that are going to interest rates and as we know the interest rates are going up where a lot of where there are a lot of those five year renewable rates issued at that time so as these interest rates are going up and they have to re uh, mortgage is the same thing going to happen that happened back then you mean people taking out bad loans uh, taking out five year variable rate loans right. at low interest rates and then in five years the interest rates are up and they can't afford that mortgage payment i i, I certainly hope not i mean yeah. Uh, we can't control what individual people do, um, but I would hope that there'd be some memory of what happened to so many people from that. Clearly, anybody that's gone through Mr. Moriarty's class wouldn't do that, right, Brian? <laughs> but but you're right, you're right though. Are we, will we see another housing bubble, and will it be in part because of rocket mortgages and all those programs that you see on TV that aren't necessarily... Um, you know, going through the process that other local lenders, our local lenders, aren't the ones that get foreclosed on. Uh, I don't think it's the lenders so much as it is the mortgage brokers. Yeah, well, they did put in place some new laws and some new restrictions for mortgage brokers to be registered. There are more um, penalties for mortgage brokers that are taking advantage, doing the scam kind of things in there. Where before, I hope we, we all learned a lesson from 2008, and because it, not only crashed the housing market, it crashed the entire economy, you're right. So um, I, I don't see as many refinances now, to be honest with you, because when the rates went up, many of the people that have refinanced pretty much got really low rates in the fours and, you know, but I, but I, and I remember years ago, we'd get people that would refinance three or four times and keep taking money out, mm -hmm. and those people found themselves in trouble. And sometimes they were for the right reasons, for health issues and uh, college loans and things like that. But I haven't seen as much as that, Susan. Mr. Buckley, do you have an idea of the number of, so you track foreclosure deeds? We at the Registry of Deeds um, modified our recording system back in 2008 and along with other documents like that we track, like assignments, mortgages, uh, homesteads, and I do have a monthly newsletter that Joe brought with him. He was gonna, were you gonna give me a plug today, Wade? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. No, we, do a month, we do a monthly newsletter, um, it, and it's available on our website, uh, which is PlymouthDeeds.org. Um, on our website, um, at the, on the third page, of every newsletter, every month, we do a listing of foreclosures. A foreclosure deed is when the lender has taken back property from a, le from a person, a lender has taken the property back by, by a foreclosure. A order of notice is a notice we get at the registry when someone's in trouble. Um, and cl clearly, of the 27 communities, Brockton is still the highest of those. In the month of April, there were 10 properties taken back by lenders for foreclosure deeds and 16 that are on the way if, if something doesn't happen to fix it. Um, however, we have a great relationship with NeighborWorks of Southern Mass so that every foreclosure notice in Plymouth County gets sent to NeighborWorks and they send out a notice uh, to all of those individuals and tell them we're available to help you counsel. And I think it's just a great program that's been modeled elsewhere. Um, and I'm not sure I answered your question, Susan, but we do track them um, every month and put them out there and uh, share that information with some neighborhood housing counselors around the county. Thank you. So year to date, how many deeds have you seen in Brockton? Well, I don't have a year to date in Brockton. I can get you that. I just, this one is a month. Okay. But so clearly it's not at the level that it was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's been coming down. Overall, year to date, we're down about 22%. Joe has the number here um, across the county. 
And, but I can get you the Brockton numbers. I've, I've done that in the past, so it's easy for us to pull it off. We received the enterprise, <coughs> you know, in you know, the old-fashioned way, yeah. delivered to our door, and I've been tracking the number of auctions, sure, sure. auction sure. notices that are, yeah. are published for Ward 4 properties. And, yeah. and actually, all of the city, and I mean, the other day, it was three whole pages. Right. Mm -hmm. No, the, in the enterprise, right after, you know, near the end of the sports section, right? You'll see all those all those ads. There it is, right there. there. We go. You have it, right? There we go. Just for fun. Yep. But, but you know, the the problem in the housing market right now across Plymouth County is there's no inventory, meaning there aren't mm -hmm. enough houses listed, um, and the pr sale prices have gone up so high, even in Brockton, and in Hull and Wayham and more citified areas. You know, but I'll be around to answer questions and awesome. happy to be here. Thanks, everyone. Thank um, just so Thank you. So the idea of this is to inform and communicate and continue to inform and pass on this information. Uh, this, this evening we're here in, at the Broughton Main Library, which everyone understands one of the largest library systems in the Commonwealth. And uh, we're in the historic main library. There's a whole lot of activities always going on. We're in one of the conference rooms. People don't realize this. You can have access to these conference rooms for different you know, activities, trainings, et cetera. And uh, there's parking on White Ave in the lot. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because we're getting close to summer. I also want to mention uh, I, have, I now possess the hottest item in the whole city, um, the summer uh, resource guide. And this was a brilliant invention. What is it, like 20-something years ago? Yeah. And every year it comes out. And this is great for parents and grandparents, et cetera, to know all these things that are going on. Because the biggest misinformation mm -hmm. is that there's nothing going on in this city. As a matter of fact, in this building right now at 10 past 7 on 304 Main Street, there are five things taking place. And that's excluding what people normally come to do at a library, read books, find books, go on the computers, etc. We have an art exhibit from uh, the uh, annual K through 8. Okay, with all the schools in here in the multi-purpose room. You have to go through it like five times because there's so many nice things. And the people that teach them the art are upstairs in the Driscoll Gallery exhibiting. There's an English as a second language training going on. There's a homework club going on. There's a, what, what, there was another group uh, meeting um, to do some sort of um, group training, etc. So this is all things that are always going on all the time in the Broughton Main Library and in the branches. Monday and Tuesday nights, the Broughton Main Library is open, and I'm going to put a little plug in. Broughton Library Foundation gift shops open too. So, anyway, um, there's a couple of colleagues here of mine, but I did want to mention that um, my colleague from the school committee, Judy Sullivan, is around the block working on negotiations. <laughs> so she could not be here, but she's always available for everyone. If so someone has something they want me to pass along, you know, be happy to do that. I also want to point out there's an information table. This is the mini information table. There's a rack upstairs and a rack down the hall. We try to feed them with everything we possibly can. And I want to emphasize, too, we have information on veterans and the services we have in the city as we come on to Memorial Day. Again, State Rep uh, Jerry Cassidy and I are sharing this time, so any time that he wants to come back here. But I'm going to call up my, for, uh, my colleague to my left here, um, Wynn Farrell, because he's going to talk a little bit about code enforcement, because I'm really big on that. Yes, thank you. Where are the resource guides available? Oh, they're, um, they can be online if you want to do a drop-down box on the um, Brockton Public Schools website, bpsma.org. Or um, you can go to the Parent Information Center, City Hall, and a couple other places. Some of the ward councils will have them for their constituents. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Ann. A uh, <laughs> couple of preliminary announcements. We will be going through budget hearings on June 4th, 5th, and 6th. And I don't know why, but every time we get to the portion where there's an appropriation for cemeteries, Ann always looks over at me. True story. <laughs> True story. I mean, two years in a row. Now, the third year, if this happens, we're going to go to dispute resolution. <laughs> because I don't know if there's some message that I'm not aware of, but it, it, it's, it's gotten to be the standard joke that, that she will look at me. 
The other announcement is that if Brian's retiring, he looks that young, boy, I, I, I missed the boat. I should, I should have been long gone. So, uh, um, so budget, very important. Uh, code enforcement, very important. Yes. So what is code enforcement? Because I know it's a term we throw around, and you've probably seen me mention it, and you've seen it in the paper. Code enforcement is nothing more than making sure that the laws relating to buildings, health, electrical codes, plumbing codes, sanitation codes, business codes, regulations are uniformly, fairly, and consistently enforced. I'm not going to get into what we're doing now. I'm just going to say we need to step it up. Whatever the priorities are now, they've got to be raised. And I don't think we as elected officials should be involved in reviewing or participating in or discussing code violations when someone makes a complaint. If Eleanor calls something in and it's a Board of Health issue, it should go right to the Board of Health. Elected officials who depend upon votes and campaign contributions and other things should not be involved in discussing or otherwise saying, yes, we'll do this, no, we won't do this. That's the current system. There's a quality of life meeting that occurs every Thursday. The mayor chairs it. There's, a, there's a, uh, an agenda that's put together, and very respectfully, I don't like that because I think political people could either use code enforcement as a weapon or they could use code enforcement as a reward. So let it go to the career professionals. If it's a Board of Health issue, send it there. If it's a police department issue, send it there. So what I've proposed, and I think Ian is on board with it, is I filed an ordinance to create a Brockton Neighborhood Code Enforcement Program. The only way to prove that the work is being done is to mandate that the, stati the statistics come into us. So if this ordinance is passed, on a quarterly basis, every department, building, police, fire, health, they'll all be required to tell us where they went, what was the violation, what was the address, what action was taken, and what's the ultimate resolution. Now, for those of you who think that, and, and I know many of you know I retired from the police department, code enforcement doesn't mean enforcement alone. You start off with education. Because a lot of people open a business and frankly, they are not aware of all the regulations that they have to comply with. Zoning, some people open a business and they're not aware that they're in an area which requires a, a variance or a special permitted use. So I always like to say, let's do education first. Let's encourage people to know what's required of them. But then if we don't get that degree of cooperation that's needed, I think you have to step up the enforcement. Sometimes it's a letter giving someone 30 days to comply. If they still don't comply, then unfortunately they may have to be summoned into either housing court or Brockton District Court or be given a non-criminal violation. But it's important to do it not just because it makes the city look better. And I, and I really do think the city could look a lot better. I know Sue was fighting a consistent battle in Ward 4 with different businesses that have vehicles parked all over the place, blocking sidewalks. Um, that's not the city we want. We want the city to be as aesthetically pleasing as possible, as safe as possible, and the only way we do that is to have, again, emphasis, fair, uniform, consistent enforcement, education, and addressing the different code violations there are. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, the ordinance will come back in sometime, I believe, in July. It may be refined because Unlike what you may see on national TV, we actually listen and learn from one another, and <laughs> we, we work as a team and we get along. And uh, and so I think it will. It, it may go through a couple of more iterations, but it'll come out with what we think will be appropriate for Brockton, and we'll implement it, and we'll start getting quarterly statistics. And if I don't get any statistics, then it tells me they're not doing the work. I hope that won't be the case, but. We'll, we'll take it a step at a time. So any, uh, any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Sue? Will you speak to C-Click Fix? C-Click Fix is a very good software program that's on our website. You can actually log on and you can indicate where a particular code violation occurs. The problem is that in some cases, they're going to the police department 
and instead of immediately taking action, the police department's referring it to the mayor's office because I guess it goes into that quality of life review bin. And very respectfully, I just don't think that's a good public policy. You know, if you, the interesting thing is when people call a city for any reason, that might be the only time they have interaction with us. And if we leave them with the impression that nothing was done, no one cares, it wasn't addressed, no one got back to the complainant to let them know what's going on, they're going to probably figure that we're all useless. And I don't want that. I want people to be able to go on to see Click Fix, put in a complaint, it will go immediately to the appropriate department, and it'll be addressed. I don't need any weekly meeting. I don't need an agenda made out. I don't need elected officials being involved. Let the career people do what they need to do. And I think if we do this, if this becomes a reality, you know, the first six months will be hard because people don't like changes. But I think after that six-month period, I think you will see a marked difference in the way the city looks, the way businesses behave, the way we have compliance with regulations. And I think we'll see measurable progress. I don't think we'll ever have perfection. I'm not, I'm not the naive enough to think that every business will fall into line, but we'll make a good, we'll make a good effort at it. And, uh, and lastly, um, to get away from code enforcement for a minute, I do want to single out Jerry again. Um, it is teamwork in government. We, we can't exist in Brockton without state aid. If we didn't receive Chapter 78 and state aid, the city would be dead in the water. And so, I, I want to single him out again along with Representative Cronin, Senator Brady, and Representative Dubois because we all work together and uh, again, we learn from one another and hopefully we, on balance, make the best possible decisions. Yes? I just, I, I'm not sure I understand how this ordinance thing happens. If somebody sees a code violation in their neighborhood, do they call their city counselor to register <coughs> the complaint and they tell you what department no, it, it, well, we would hope that you'd have some idea of what it is. For example, if it's a health violation, you'd call the Board of Health. If it's a building violation, someone operating a business out of a residential area, you'd call the building department because that becomes a zoning issue. And what you're proposing is this department would get back to the city council with the list yes, of Yes, yes. That, the, 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 that this group would have, and it doesn't, by the way, I, I have emphasized to my colleagues, I'm not suggesting creating another department. A simple Excel spreadsheet on a shared drive will do it. Just have the police feed in their information, the health department theirs, the fire department theirs, and at the end of the three month period, you publish the statistics. Now, if we see frequent flyers come up <laughs> on that list, then we'll know that we have to go back and step up the enforcement. But, uh, that's really all it's about. But again, you could use C Click Fix, which is on the city's website. That would hopefully channel it to the appropriate department based on the type of complaint you indicate you're, you're lodging in, logging in. And, but if not, if all else fails and you do not get any satisfaction and no one from the city shows up, yes, call us. Yes, please do. Yes, Jack. If I might add to C Click Fix. Um, a lot of the ward counselors have a um, <coughs> sort of a sort of a grid set up over their ward in the city. So you know, me for instance, I see every C click fix report that comes into Ward Six. So that allows me to say, you know what, this property's popped up a lot or this has been open for a weird amount of time. It hasn't, you know, nobody's gotten back to it. So it allows us to uh, focus our attention on that and keep track of the reports for our area. So we are able to, to look at that as well. The at-large counselors don't have that because obviously we'd have it every <laughs> feeding in from the entire city. <laughs> I, I'd be going blind. So yeah, anything yeah. we missed? No, I don't know. I think no, this was a good beginning, and you can leave your phone number. Yes. Uh, home phone is 508-583-0052. Cell phone is 508-272-9880. Thank and, you, sir. And uh, with everyone's help, we'll have a better city. Thank you.
again, we're at the Ward 5 meeting. It's uh, Tuesday, May 21st. I want to also mention the city received um, funding for a new program on uh, lead ba lead based paint has a control and again uh, there's more information on this and there's a wonderful woman in charge of it um, Laurie Chu and uh, you can visit it at Brockton redevelopment authority.com and this is very advantageous for individuals in older homes that need to realize these things so I had mentioned I have a little agenda there and I mentioned I'm going to have my other two colleagues come up again state rep um, Cassidy is here joining us and uh, again at any time he's more than welcome back <laughs> and I want to also point out that uh, Senator Brady spoke with me this morning and of course they're in budget and I said very good I look forward to seeing more funding for the city of Broughton but in the meanwhile so is why he's not here this evening so I'll ask um, Jack to come up here Jack Lally speak for a minute here and uh, yeah. well, thank you um, my name is Jack Lally I'm the counselor for Ward 6 Ann and I, east side. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't really have any issue that I came that I, I plan to speak about. Uh, I just wanted to be here because, you know, I like going to the ward meetings and everything. Um, while I am here, I do have an email list for my ward meetings. If you email me at jlally at c-o-b-m-a dot u-s, uh, I will put you on that list, so just say, you know, who, who you are and that you'd like to be on the email list, and you will be notified uh, before a ward meeting. I try and do about, uh, you know, quarterly meetings, so I always have one after the budget. Uh, last couple of years, we've had Jay Condon from the finance uh, office, our chief financial officer, and Aldo Petronio, the school department's chief budget officer, uh, sort of explain the budget. Uh, at the end of that month to say, you know, where we are, what's in it, what were our shortcomings, things like that. Um, there is, I don't have the number on me, but it is online. There is a pothole hotline that you can call. Tis the, tis the season. Tis the season. Uh, so that number you can call and leave voicemail 24-7, and uh, they do get out there and fix it. I had, I had my mother call just as a test. You know, see if see if it worked. There was a real pothole too, and uh, and they they did they did get right out there. Yeah, oh yeah, they're there. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, any concerns, anything you want to see fixed, we are your city councilors. Uh, give us a call. That's our job. All right, thank you. I want to mention um, my colleague um, Susan Castro is going to come up here for a moment and tell us when her next meeting is and what's going on. Uh, what we said, you know, we set different goals here, and I said I, we would push for transparency, constant, correct information out in the community, and I emphasize over and over again, you are invited to all these meetings. I have a couple of people here that have come to the License Commission meeting more than once, and they will be back next month for certain issues. We have people that come to Zoning Board of Appeals to learn about what's going on, Planning Board. You are welcome to all these meetings to learn about what's going on, and um, at the end of this, I'm going to let a couple of people make some announcements that are very involved in the community and have some different things going on. So I'm going to have Susan come up here. Thank you, Thank you. Beauregard. Good evening. I'm Susan DeCastro. I represent Ward 4. This is my first term as a counselor. I'm in my fifth month as a counselor. It's been very interesting. I'm learning a lot. And this evening I would like to make you aware that Ward 4 will be having its second ward meeting of the year on Wednesday, June 13th from 6.30 until 8.00 in the cafeteria at the Gilmore School on Clinton Street. I'm going to have several speakers there. My first confirmed speaker is Mary Beth O'Brien, the principal of the Gilmore School, and she is going to report to you a lot of exciting and interesting things that are happening in education at the Gilmore School. I'm, I'm delighted with all of the presentations that have been made here. I'm sure the audience here tonight, as well as the listening audience at home, will benefit from this. I would finally like to applaud Councilor Beauregard, the hardest workingest counselor on the city council.
Okay, now we'll, we'll start with the announcements here because I don't want people to say they don't know what's going on. Again, my name is Ian Borga. I'm the Ward 5 City Councilor, and we've had neighbor works here tonight, the Red Straw Deeds here tonight. We've had State Rep Jerry Cassidy, who is joining me on this. We've had Ron Freddy with the Greater Brockton Dispute Resolution. Uh, we've had, um, I'm sorry, the... Um, I don't want to forget this. We've had our buddy Jimmy Pereira from Old Colony Planning Council. You've had some information here tonight. You're going to get some more. So right now, and then of course, we've had some of my colleagues up here. And I'm going to start with this. Broughton Resource Network meeting is going to be on Thursday, May 31st at the East Side Library at exactly what time, please? Yes? I'm sorry. 6 the Broughton Resource Network. No, that's me. Oh, okay. Well, Lynn Smith, come on up. Okay. And then. Oh, yeah. I was on the spot. Oh, yeah. You're on the spot. So, hi, everyone. I'm Lynn Smith. I'm with the Keith Park Neighborhood Association, the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association. About six months ago, a consulting group came up from Washington, D.C., called the National Resource Network. And their focus was to try to figure out how to create grassroots involvement, community involvement to take the Keith Park Neighborhood Association and the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association and duplicate that in other neighborhoods. If you don't know what we've done, well, we're the little free library people. If you don't know what we've done, we're the Easter egg people. If you don't know what we've done, we brought Frederick Douglass in for a one-man show. So we do a lot of community building efforts. And so the city wants to replicate that in different neighborhoods. We believe in asset-based community building, which means instead of organizing around a negative, we organize around a positive, like a park. You know, when the New England uh, first English settlers came, they built their villages in a circle to be protected from the Native Americans. But there was always a green space in the middle of the village where they would grow vegetables and graze their cows and gossip about each other. <laughs> and so, you know, when you go to any New England village, what do you see? There's a village green. So we use our parks as our village greens to have events, but also to grow community. And so we had a, an open meeting where we invited people from the community to come and say, do you want to get trained on how to do this? Do you want to learn how to run a meeting? Do you want to learn how to get your neighbors involved? Do you want to learn how to get a tax ID to open a bank account? Do you want to learn how to ask for money in a very professional way? Do you want to learn how to build community around a topic or a space or a feeling. So that's what the National Resource Network is, and our group is called Team Brockton RLP, the Team Brockton Resident Leader Program. So we're having a meeting on May 31st at the East Library at 6.30. Anybody is willing to come if you want to try to start a neighborhood group in your association. What we're going to do at the end of May is we're going to talk about how to get a name, how to get a tax ID, how to open a bank account if someone wants to give you a donation, how to run a meeting, how to get people to join. In June, we're gonna talk about self-governance. How do we wanna treat each other? What happens if someone runs into a problem? What happens if somebody does something bad that we have to correct them and say, don't do that um, again? So that's what's happening on the 31st. Just before that, though, mark your calendars, May 25th, is the Huntington School Parade, and I will defer it to Carl. I think it's 122 um, this year. So the whole student body of the Huntington moved to the Gilmore, so those kids are gonna go back to the Huntington, 12 noon, the parade is gonna go on just as normal. So May 25th, Huntington School. May 31st, National Resource Network, Resident Leader Program, just contact Lynn Smith, if you're on Facebook, I'm famous. Anybody here can tell you how to get a hold of me. <laughs> We'd love to um, have you. June 9th, a whole bunch of things are going on. The South Shore Leadership Conference is going on June 9th. June 9th kicks off Diabetes Awareness Week. During my day job, I work for Old Colony Elder Services, and we are doing a workshop on how to eat healthy when shopping at the dollar store. So June 9th. June 9th is um, that, and then Mary Waldron's Just Checking In Foundation, which is an amazing supporter of the community, is doing her wiffle ball tournament on June 9th. Then if that's not enough for you, on June 10th 
in Keith Park, we're having our annual Flag Day picnic. So come at 12 o'clock, bring your own picnic hamper, but we provide cold drinks, watermelon, cookies, and we have games coming out of the kazoo for the kids. Keith Park is in Campello. Remember where the old KFC in Campello used to be? Yeah, it's uh, main and plain and yeah. So June 10th is the Flag Day um, picnic. Then, if any of you are concerned about elder abuse, there were 30,000 cases reported in Massachusetts last year, and almost 10,000 of them were turned over to the district attorney for prosecution. So June 14th, we're leading a march. Everybody is invited, high noon, 12 o'clock. We start at the Council on Aging. We march down Main Street. Come to my office at OCES, we have speakers, we give out awards, we go back to the Council on Aging, uh, and we have light refreshments. So June 10th, I talked about the picnic. Yeah. June 14th is the March Against Elder Abuse. And then July 1st, we got a grant from Mass Humanities. We read Frederick Douglass's speech, What is the Fourth of July to the Slave? out loud in the Frederick Douglass Community Garden, steps from where our stop on the Underground Railroad was. But we do it a little differently in Brockton. We read the speech in the languages of our ancestors. So the speech is 45 paragraphs. We invite everybody to the community to come. Last year we had a paragraph in Gaelic, Greek, Italian, German, Lithuanian, Polish, Spanish, Cape Verdean Creole, Haitian Creole, Mandarin Chinese. This year we're adding American Sign Language and we're adding um, Hmong. Hmong. Um, so if any of you speak any languages and want to come, July 1st, 4 o'clock in the Douglas Garden, we're the only community in Massachusetts that, that does something like that. English too. Yep, English. Yep, absolutely. Uh, English too. And then the most exciting thing is, remember Friday Night Flicks where we get the big blow up screen and we put it in the park and we invite the kids? So the DW Park folks are going to do one by the gazebo in DW Field in July. And then we're going to do another one in Keith Park in August. And the kids from the Gilmore School are voting on what movie they want um, to say. So anyway, I don't think, I probably forgot a whole bunch of stuff, but that just, you know, all of this stuff, what does it do? It gets us out of our house, it gets us to meet each other, it's sort of the beginning of reconciliation. You know, once you know your neighbor, you know, maybe you get along with your neighbor a little bit better, and we're building community one block at a time. Thank you, Lynn, and I'm going to have uh, Carl Landerholm have an announcement here, and I want to emphasize, again, all these groups of people are here, they're represented here, but they also come to this community or have offices in this community to assist everyone, and afterwards, you know, we're going to close, I definitely want to thank Broughton Community Access, again, emphasize that uh, State Rep uh, Jerry Cassidy is here, he kicked off the meeting, and now he's... Uh, <laughs> sitting there so I'm going to let uh, Mr. History here and I've emphasized um, one thing throughout all this again you were invited at all these meetings okay you own this you own Brockton you own the state house you're always welcome I can attest to this having gone many times you know uh, Representative Cassie would be happy to see you you know go, get around see what goes on here and, you know, the fact that the traditions still exist, and of course they've been revised a little bit in some respects, and, you know, technology, et cetera. But the thing is that we've been keeping all this going. And I also want to encourage people, because this was one of my goals, to get people realizing that you can be on governing boards and commissions in this city. Okay? And we have, um, we're going to let uh, Carl talk about that and his little homestead, and we'll do the wine down here. <laughs> Thank you. I believe the word is unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. The opportunity is, uh, first off, May 31st, where uh, I'm president of the Brockton High School Alumni Association, of which we have 60,000 living graduates. And we're honoring three achieving uh, members of different classes, 1982, 19, uh, 2011, and uh, 1977. All three are uh, ladies. They are all achievers in their own right. 
It'll be a paper article, and I won't spoil the opportunity to tell you who they are, but they are wonderful folks. It's going to be held at Stacy Adams Cultural Arts Center. That's a take away from the last uh, 14 years where we've been on the stage at Brockton High School, and we've been there with a five-minute program. We're planning something uh, significantly more because we're also passing out four scholarships for the uh, senior graduates of the high school. So it's a great opportunity to see what a, uh, a cultural gem has been created out of a uh, shoe factory. Mm -hmm. And it is hugely successful with the, uh, what used to be a problem place is now a place of destination. And uh, that leads me to a statement of a sense of place. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is teach our young people a sense of place. 70% of our population has not come from this area. And as the former president, immediate past, of the Brockton Historical Society, we have for the last 12 years, this will be the 13th, on June 11th, I will have something about 155 students from the Kennedy School. And the intent is to split them up between the fire museum, the homestead, and treat them to what the uh, sense of place, and that's a choice word. That promise of <laughs> understanding what heritage is, but also the witness of what has taken place and the magnificence of what the opportunity is if they're aware of it. On the 19th, I will do a walking tour, and we've done this for several years, right in downtown, and we call it the 15 rounds of history. And there is so much to be proud of and if the, uh, these are students from West Junior High, and the magic is you excite their curiosity and the promise of uh, citizenship develops out of it. The uh, opportunity of, uh, unfortunately, uh, Jim Benson took over as uh, president of the Historical Society and it cost him his life. <laughs> and that's not funny. Previous to that, he had written a book with Nicole Casper called The Brockton's Greatest Disaster when 11 city officials went on a fishing trip up to Moosehead Lake up in Maine. And uh, it was the first time the boat had been launched after winter dry dock. And with the numbers of uh, weighted folks on it, they got to the middle of the pond and the lap strake let go. The boat sank. You lost a fire chief, a former mayor, doctors, uh, dentists, and the book uh, really puts a light on the lives back in 1928, and it was May 13, 1928. So when you gather information like that, like the Strand Theater Fire, uh, that was a huge loss. And briefly as I can make it, my father was on the fire department in that era in the line group. And when the general was called on it, he got called to come in and he would put uh, floodlights where engine company one and uh, squad were. He didn't have enough extension cord. He went out back up on the main street in front of the Kennedy building, got the cord. As he came through the door on School Street, the roof came in and where he had his light was where he would have been. So. Stories like that repeat themselves time and time again. So if you hear the history, you can appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And my job, no matter whether I hold an office or not, is to create a sense of place. And the promise of tomorrow is as much as you want to make it. And uh, I've done OK. <laughs> so thank you for your time. So everyone, thanks for coming tonight. Um, Ann Borgard, Ward 5 City Council, 774-297-4939. And whoops, um, yeah, I'm going to close out and thank Broughton Community Access. And um, I'm going to ask people to stick around because other people have announcements and what have you. So Manager Mike, thanks for being here tonight. And he's a Ward 5 person too. Thanks everyone for being here. And Summer Solstice. Uh, right around the block here at Salisbury Park next to the Plouffe Academy, Friday evening, June 22nd to kick things off. So what have you learned tonight? There's a whole lot happening.